Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new video here on High Level Listening. If you've ever wondered, how do you start a conversation with English-speaking tourists? How do you talk to other people while you're traveling? Do you ever wish you could help more tourists when they visit your city? This video will be perfect for you if you'd like to answer some of these questions. Today on High Level Listening, we're going to teach you some useful phrases questions and conversation starters about meeting tourists and traveling in your city. Yes, that's right. Uh, we're very excited to help you start conversations with English speaking tourists in your city, your country or your local area in naturally spoken English. My name's Mark. I'm the British voice here on High Level Listening and together with Kat from the US, we're going to give you some very useful phrases and expressions to help you talk to tourists give them help or give them recommendations and wish them well. As a quick reminder before we begin, we always put subtitles on our videos, but if you also want a PDF transcript of the episode as a downloadable file that you can take offline and study at your own pace, you can join us as a high-level listening member here on YouTube. There is details about joining as a member in the description below. So in this video, we'll go through a range of words and phrases from starting a conversation with tourists to the end of the conversation and saying goodbye. After each set of phrases, there will be a short dialogue to show you how this new language sounds in a real conversation. So let's get started. Uh, we'll start at the start of the conversation. Kat, what are some ways you can start a conversation with a tourist? Okay, so these are going to be some icebreakers. And what we mean by that is you can start a conversation with a complete stranger. These are great, easygoing questions. They'll be very uh, comfortable for the other person and very easygoing. So we can start with number one. Hi, sorry, did I hear you speaking English? This is a great question if you are in a country that doesn't speak English and you hear some tourists speaking English. This is a very common question when Americans especially are traveling around. Someone might ask, Hi, sorry, did I hear you speaking English? Sorry to eavesdrop. Are you from England? So, sorry to eavesdrop. Eavesdrop. This is a slightly rare verb, and if I listen to another person's conversation, I am eavesdropping. You shouldn't do this. That's why I say sorry to eavesdrop. But if I hear some English, and especially if I hear an American accent or a British accent, I can maybe tell where you're from. So sorry to eavesdrop. Are you from England? Good morning. I couldn't help overhearing. Are you American? Similarly to eavesdrop, which we also use in American English, overhearing, overhearing. This is, again, uh, something where we are listening to someone else's conversation. Normally, that's considered maybe a little impolite or a little rude. But in the case of someone traveling or speaking another language, you might want to kind of break the ice and say, hi, good morning. I couldn't help overhearing. Are you American? We could put anything you want after that. I couldn't help overhearing. Are you a little lost? I couldn't help overhearing. Are you French? So I was listening to your conversation. Sorry, but maybe I can help or maybe I want to introduce myself. Hi, I couldn't help but notice you speak English. I use the same phrase as Kat. I couldn't help. I couldn't help means I didn't want to, but sometimes when you hear another language, your brain kind of switches on or you can hear it's a different sound or it's a different tone and you notice. Like if I'm in a foreign country and I hear English, my ears perk up. Like who's speaking English? So I couldn't help. Uh, I couldn't help but notice you speak English. That's another icebreaker. Then the final one for me, Hiya, are you here on vacation? Hiya, are you here on vacation? Short, simple, easy. Are you here on vacation? 
because I'm from the UK, I use a different word. Aya, are you here on holiday? Holiday and vacation are the same thing, but in the UK, I would say, Aya, are you here on holiday? Another icebreaker. Are you here for the special event? Maybe in your city there is a big holiday, a big festival or a special occasion happening in your city and that is attracting lots of tourists or people from other places. If you think that they are visiting this festival, this special event, this market, you can ask, are you here for the festival? Are you here for the Christmas market? Are you here for the race? This is a good way to ask tourists and get a conversation going. So, like we promised, we're going to give you a short dialogue using the same phrases and expressions. Kat will go first. Hi, uh, I couldn't help overhearing. Are you American? Oh, no, I'm English, actually. Oh, that's nice. Are you here on vacation? Yeah, uh, I'm here with my family. All right. So our next set of icebreakers are actually really great if you notice that someone looks a little lost or someone looks like they might need a little help. Now, we could use some of those other phrases. Oh, sorry. Couldn't help overhearing. Uh, are you a little turned around? So you might be listening to someone and they might be talking about feeling lost or not understanding something. Those would be great phrases to use. Or if you just want to come up to them and talk to them because someone looks lost, we can start with this. I noticed you looked a little turned around. I noticed you looked a little turned around. Turned around is a very common way to say lost. So a little turned around. Um, is it this? Wait, I think it's this way. Make, what does the map say? I'm a little turned around, and I'm the local. I noticed you looked a little turned around. I noticed you looked a little turned around. Another phrase you could use, are you looking for a place? For example, are you looking for the ticket counter? Are you looking for the train station? You might be close to a famous place and you know lots of tourists like to go there. If you see a group of tourists and they look a little bit turned around or a bit confused, you could offer to help. Maybe you can guess where they want to go because everybody goes there. Are you looking for the art gallery? Are you looking for Downing Street? Another good one uh, that's very similar to Mark's is, are, are you looking for something in particular? Are you looking for something in particular? Because sometimes you might be in an area that's quite, quite famous, or you might just be in a neighborhood, right? So another one, very short and simple. Need any help? Need any help? Short, sweet, and simple. Do you need any help? Often when we have, um, in spoken English, naturally spoken English, we drop the do you. Need any help? Need any help? Everything okay? Need any, need any help? Do you need help finding somewhere? Similarly, do you need help finding the tube station? Do you need help finding the entrance? This is another way to ask for help or offer help straight away. Maybe they're close to the entrance or maybe you know it's a difficult place to find. Do you need help finding the train station? And if they say yes, you can help them. Need any help finding your way around? Need any help finding your way around? Okay, so naturally, need any help finding your way around? Finding your way around means moving around or traveling around your neighborhood, the city. It's moving from place to place. We like to use the word around. Turned around, getting around, finding your way around. So, need any help finding your way around? You need directions. 
So if you know to go straight, turn left, and then it's on your left, if you know exactly where to go and where to walk, you can offer directions to help them. Do you need directions? You can also add the specific place to this. Do you need directions to the tube station? Do you need directions to the gallery? If they say yes, you can say, OK, go down this street, take the second right and give them detailed instructions. Do you need directions? Then if someone says no, it's not considered impolite to ask them once more. Sometimes as a tourist, we are feeling a little stressed, but we don't want to bother other people. This happens in our own language. Sometimes I'm a little stressed and I just want to try to figure out uh, what's happening. I don't want to ask another person for help. This is very common, okay? We just feel a little stressed. So if you ask me a question and, oh, uh, no, no, I'm okay. Uh, no, it's okay. But if I still look a little confused and flustered, you might offer again, but in a different way. Are you sure? I'm happy to help. Are you sure? Because when I say, no, I'm okay, it's fine. Are you sure? I'm happy to help. I'm happy to help. Now, if someone says no one more time, so we usually say no twice, that's it. We can finish the conversation. Okay, no worries. Have a good day. Moving on. Moving on. In uh, American culture, this might be the same in the UK as well. It's okay to offer two times, but after that, so we don't want to continue doing something like that. It's considered rude after that. Okay, so like before, here's a short dialogue with these phrases. Hi, I noticed you looked a little turned around. Do you need any help? Oh, no, um, we're okay, I think. Are you sure? I'm happy to help. Do you need directions? Yeah, actually, we're looking for the big museum. Oh, yeah, of course. If you head this way, it's the next street over. Oh, thanks so much. All right, so here we are continuing the conversation. These are more of situations and conversations after you've had a little icebreaker and you want to keep talking to the person, okay? So we're going to be continuing the conversation. Let's start with one of my favorites. What brings you here? What brings you here? What brings you here is why did you come here? But the phrase, why did you come here, feels a little serious and maybe like I'm a little mad at you. Why did you come to this place? Why did you come here? So something way more casual, way more easygoing. What brings you here? What brings you here? Something interesting, some work, something fun, a museum, vacation. Let me know. What brings you here? Where are you visiting from? This is, again, a more casual, more friendly way to say, where are you from? Where are you from is correct and it is okay, but uh, there is a more casual, familiar version that native speakers use, even to, I say it to other Brits or I say it to other Americans. Where are you visiting from? Are visiting, because I know your stay is temporary, or I expect your stay is temporary, so it's the present continuous, where are you visiting from? Another good one that I like is first time in the States, first time in New York, first time in Houston, first time in Canada. So is this your first time in the city that we live in? Is this your first time here? First time here? First time in Houston, first time in New York? So after you've broken the ice and you're talking a little bit more, I can say, where are you visiting from? And they say, oh, uh, the USA. The next question, what part of the US? What part of the States? The States and the US are the same country. Again, I want to know what state, what city or what specific area of the country are you from? So the United States is very big. There are lots of different places. So if they say, 
I'm from the US. Which part of the US? Or if someone's from China, what part of China? What part of Germany? What part of Turkey? You can ask for a bit more detail. What part of Brazil? So here's a short dialogue using some of these expressions. Hi, good morning. Are you here for the art show? Yeah, you? Yeah, it should be really nice. Are you here visiting? Yes, we are. We're from Canada. Oh, cool. What part of Canada? From, from Vancouver, actually. Okay, so if we're going to continue the conversation, you might want to talk a little bit about their trip so far. So all the places that they visited until now. So one of the great, one of the easier questions that we can ask, are you enjoying your visit so far? Are you enjoying your visit so far? Are you enjoying your visit so far? Have you been to, and then a famous place. Have you been to the art museum yet? Have you been to the Christmas market yet? Have you been to the beach yet? So I know that your vacation is still continuing. Maybe you arrived a few days ago and during those few days, you have visited a couple of different places. So I can ask where you have been or if you have been somewhere else before. So have you been to the art museum? Have you been to uh, the park? <laughs> Anywhere famous that tourists usually visit in your area? Have you been to Chinatown yet? Any place you could think of. Has everything been okay with your visit so far? Has everything been okay with your visit so far? Now, this is a good question that we often hear at a hotel, um, especially if someone has been staying there and they might have had some problems. Another time that I hear this is when I'm talking to my parents while I'm on vacation. My parents will ask, has everything been okay? Has everything been okay? Now, they don't want to ask me, have you had problems? Because that sounds very serious. So has everything been okay? You have enough money. You uh, don't have any problems. Nothing serious. Nothing bad has happened. So this is a more casual way to say, have you had problems? Has everything been okay? Has everything been okay with your visit so far? How long are you planning on staying? Maybe your vacation is a couple of days. Maybe you're going to stay for one week, two weeks. If it's a big city, you can spend a lot of time there. So how long are you planning on staying? Again, your vacation, your holiday is a temporary thing. So stay is the right verb. You stay in a hotel. You stay in an Airbnb because it's not forever. So how long are you planning on staying? And then if you want to get a little bit more information about where they went in the past on their trip, what's your favorite place you visited? What's your favorite place that you visited? So this, you can get some more information on the past places they went on their trip. What's your favorite place you visited? One more question. What do you want to see while you're here? Again, maybe you live in a big city and there's lots of different attractions for tourists. So you can ask them what they want to do specifically. Any specific attractions, specific buildings or galleries. What do you want to see while you're here? While you're here, again, is only during this vacation time. Everything's temporary. What do you want to see while you're here? Here's a dialogue using some of these phrases and expressions. Hi, I couldn't help but notice you speak English. Yeah, hi, we're American. We're visiting from the States. Oh, that's great. Uh, are you enjoying your visit so far? Yeah, we love it here. It's been a really fun trip. Oh, that's nice to hear. How long are you planning on staying? Sadly, just another few days, but we hope to come back someday. All right, so if you want to give some recommendations or give some tips, this would be a good way to continue the conversation, especially if it's someone's first time in the city 
or they want to go try some good food or they want to try something very interesting, you can give your own recommendations and your own tips. So we can kind of start by saying, you know, what are you planning to see while you're here? Similarly, <laughs> similarly to what Mark said, what do you want to see while you're here? What are you planning to see while you're here? Then you can get an idea of what the people like, what the people want to go see, and then you might be able to give them some good recommendations based on what they say. What are you planning to see while you're here? Another question or another way you can give some advice. I know some good spots for food if you're interested. So you might live in the city and then you are a local. So local people tend to have local knowledge. They know places that are not in the tourist guides or not in a, on the tourist trail. Maybe some of your favorite spots are only popular with locals and not with tourists. But if you want to share those special places, you can share your local knowledge. I know some good spots for hiking, if you're interested. I know some good spots for clothes, if you're interested. Also, if you don't really have any specific recommendations, but you want to let them know, if you want any recommendations, just let me know. If you want any recommendations, if you need any recommendations, if you want any suggestions, if you need any suggestions, just let me know. I'm happy to share. I'm happy to let you know. Maybe I don't know yet what you want. So if you want anything, just let me know. One more way. If you want to try some local food, there is a really good place near here. So maybe I have a recommendation and we're close. Perfect. So it's not an inconvenience to send them to another place. If you want to see some really cool artwork, there's a really good place near here. Again, I can share some of my local knowledge and I can maybe improve their trip. Maybe I can show them something special and it's not far away. So if you have a specific idea for the person or that group, you can offer. If you want to do some hiking, there's a really good place near here. And for our last one, if you like this, I know a place. If you like this, I know a place. So this is the shortened version and a little bit longer. If you like local food, I know a really good spot. I know a really good place you should try. If you like hiking, I know a really good place you should try. If you like spicy food, I know a really good restaurant you should try. So these are all a little bit similar. And if you grab our PDF, you'll be able to see them side by side, making sure that you can practice them on your own. Okay, so here's a back and forth dialogue. Excuse me, I couldn't help overhearing. Are you British? Uh, yes, we are here on holiday. Nice. What are you planning to see while you're here? Uh, the main sites, mostly. We're doing a lot of tours. Oh, if you want to try some local food, there's a really good place near here. Right, so the last part. Now we're at the end of the conversation. These conversations are pretty light and pretty casual and fairly short. You don't want to bother the tourists or keep them waiting. Uh, so we're ending the conversation now, but ending the conversation uh, in a very positive way and wishing them well. I'm going to combine a couple of these because it is very common for English speakers to just line them up all together. Well, we're going to get going. It was really nice meeting you. I think if you say, nice to meet you, that's the beginning of the conversation. And at the end of the conversation, it was really nice meeting you. That means the conversation is almost over. We're saying our nice things and then we're going to leave. So, well, we're going to get going. We're going to get going, meaning we're going to leave soon. Well, we're going to get going. It was really nice meeting you. Lovely to meet you. Enjoy the rest of your trip. Enjoy the rest of your trip. 
Again, you can combine these together. Lovely to meet you. Enjoy the rest of your trip. So maybe you have a few more days. That is the rest, the rest of your time, the rest of your trip. Your trip is your visit, your holiday in this place. So lovely to meet you. Enjoy the rest of your trip. Super simple one. Have fun. Have fun. Especially if I gave you a recommendation and you're like, wow, okay, I'm going to go do that. And I say, okay, it was really nice to meet you. Have fun. Have fun. I hope you have a lovely time. I hope you have a lovely time. So I hope you have. That's the present tense because I want you to have a lovely time now and later as well. So I don't want your lovely times to stop. I want them to continue. So I hope you have a lovely time today and tomorrow. So you can do the three in a row. Lovely to meet you. Enjoy the rest of your trip. I hope you have a lovely time. I think this one is for basically every American dad. They always say, have a good one. Have a good one. The one is day, week, year, vacation. Have a good one. Have a good rest of your afternoon. Have a good day. Have a good one. If you live in a city with a specific attraction or a place that tourists love to go, you can say, enjoy the attraction. So if you live in a city close to a beach, say, enjoy the beach. Or if they told you they are going to visit the beach, you'd say, okay, enjoy the beach. Enjoy the view. If they're going up a mountain, enjoy the view. If they're going to a restaurant that you recommended, a good spot, say, okay, enjoy the food. So now the final combination. You can do all four of my phrases in a row and it makes a really lovely goodbye. So lovely to meet you. Enjoy the rest of your trip. I hope you have a lovely time. Enjoy the food. That's so British to just give us everything. All the niceties, all yeah. the nice things all at once. No, mm -hmm. really, really have fun. Oh, enjoy yourself. Really, really, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. <laughs> have a lovely time. I know, right? Two yes, lovelies. Two lovelies. It's <laughs> super long goodbyes. Yeah. Uh, like if I'm calling my mum, it takes uh, me like two minutes to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. It's just two minutes of phrases uh -huh. back and forth. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. <laughs> Ta-ra. Oh, no. Don't open that can of worms. But yes. Uh, so now we'll do a uh, last dialogue with all of the phrases. What a beautiful day today. It's so nice. Are you here on vacation? Yeah, me and the family arrived yesterday. How long have you been here? We're just finishing up our trip. We got here last week. Oh, I hope you liked it. We loved it, but got to get back to the real world. Well, I hope you have a lovely time. Thanks so much. Have a good one. All right. So there you go. Lots of natural phrases to help you start conversations with tourists or while traveling in English. Like always, we read and reply to every single comment that we get here on YouTube, so why not take the chance to practice with us? If you see a tourist that's lost, what would you say? What's your favorite conversation starter? What's your favorite ending? Yes, and one more. Uh, are there any places that you always recommend to tourists in your area? Any exciting attractions or really nice restaurants? Let us know. Uh, we love hearing from you. And don't forget, like always, you can get the PDF transcript of this episode and all of our previous episodes if you become a high-level listening member. The description is, uh, the information is in the description below with a link so you can take these PDFs offline and improve even more. Thank you very much, everyone. We will see you very soon for another right, thank video. Thank you so much, everyone. See you next time. Bye.